Thank you for turning to page 121. Today we're going to take a look at the gods of the gnomes from Dragon 61 and from Deities and Demigods. The gods of the gnomes are, gnomes are not one of the most popular races in AD&D. &D. I've only had a handful at my table over the years, I, 10 or 15 over the years. Uh, they're just not a real popular race for our group for whatever reason. Deep gnomes, I've had quite a few of those, but I'm talking just surface gnomes. But uh, in prepping for this video, I read through this article again on Gods of the Gnomes, and I'd forgotten how interesting the, the gnome pantheon is. So I'm pretty excited to run through this and uh, talk a little bit about gnomes, and maybe reasons why I should reconsider maybe playing a gnome. Uh, I had one years ago. I did, didn't play him for long at all. Uh, maybe it's time to, to reconsider and maybe trot out a new gnomed character. So today on page 121, Gods of the Gnomes. Before I get started on today's topic, uh, I've been asked several times recently what my shirt says when I wear this particular shirt. Uh, it says on the front, we asked the Death Knight if we could trust him. Uh, this comes from a game I ran a couple of years ago where the players were confronted with an evil-looking knight who was mute. He could not speak, but he convinced the players through actions and through pantomime, basically, that he was under a curse and he really wasn't evil. And so the players decided to take a chance. So they asked him, can we trust you? And the answer was, he, he pantomimed that he could be trusted. The players went through the uh, quite a bit of the rest of the night with him in tow, and he fought monsters bravely by their side, and they became increasingly convinced that he really was what he said he was. What it turned out was he was a death knight all along. He was just playing a little game. Uh, I figured that uh, eternal life would get boring, so he'd try something a little different to keep the day interesting. So he posed as this cursed knight. He was a death knight the whole time. Uh, the tombstone indicates that, yeah, I dropped a few player characters when he turned on him. Uh, it was a fun game. One of my players actually did ask him, can we trust you? And he said yes. He didn't say it. He, he mimed yes. Nodded his head. So it became a joke at our table. Oh, let's ask the Death Knight if we can, if we can trust him. So my wife had this shirt made up to commemorate that particular game. And I like to wear it because it's one of my favorite D&D shirts. So I just wanted to show the front and back of what the shirt says. And a fun moment at our table. So that's the mystery of my shirt. Okay, to start out our look at the gnome deities, we're going to go to the Deities Demigods from 1980, and we're going to take a look at the head of the pantheon, the big enchilada, the man himself, Garl Glittergold. Yay, Garl Glittergold is the only greater god in the gnome pantheon. Uh, he is a greater god, armor class negative 2, 350 hit points, 25% MR. He's lawful good. His worshippers, wor worshippers' alignment is lawful good. Primarily gnomes. He lives in the Twin Paradises. He operates as a 15th level cleric, 10th level fighter, 16th level illusionist, 20th level thief, and an 8th level bard. He is uh, he appears to be a handsome gold skinned gnome with ever changing gemstones for eyes. And he's mischievous. He does pranks on his enemies. If the enemies are actual mortal enemies, then the pranks can be fatal. Um, and then he can also be a great companion to be with and, and a lot of fun, but you have to be ready. He's going to play little tricks on you. Uh, he once collapsed the Cobalt King's Cavern, uh, but when its people are threatened, he's grim and determined war leader who outthinks as well as outfights his opponents. He wields Ermdina, an intelligent plus five mithril steel battle axe that cuts stone as easily as it does its enemies, and it strikes for 30, three to 30 points of damage and can heal Garl completely once a day. So that's our, our chief deity of the gnomish pantheon and now we're going to take a look at the other gnomes from dragon number 61 this is from dragon magazine number 61 and this guy was published in may of 82 and this is part of the excellent point of view series by roger moore this is the gnomish point of view each of these point of views started out with a, a couple of pages on how the gnomes exist in the D and D. Uh, setting, AD&D setting, and of course at the time it was the Greyhawk setting, that was the default setting for everybody. And then from uh, there we would go in and we would take a look at the gods of the, the creatures, so in this case the gods of the gnomes. 
There are four gods brought out here. This would be in addition to, of course, to Garl Glitter Gold. And each of them are lesser gods, which is interesting. The gods of the gnomes only have one greater god, and that is Garl. The rest of these are lesser gods, so that's kind of interesting. So the first one we deal with is Bavern Wild Wanderer. He's a lesser god, as I just said. AC 1, 295 hit points, 20% MR. He's neutral good. His worshippers' alignments are all good in neutral alignments, specifically gnomes. Uh, his plane is the Twin Paradises or the Prime Material. He's a 12th level Druid, 8th level Ranger, 13th level Illusionist, 20th level Thief. Thief is a common theme with the, uh, the gnomes. It's just a popular uh, thing for the gods to have. This guy, he's the closest rival uh, in the field of good-natured mischief to Garl Glittergold. This guy's got a wicked sense of humor, and he can uh, really pull a good prank on you. So, again, this might have been what put me off gnomes a little bit. I, I'm not in D&D &D to have pranksters running around. But again, I'm, I'm taking a look at it and thinking, well, maybe I was a little too closed-minded about this. Maybe I need to open my mind a little bit. Uh, he wanders around with a traveling partner, a giant raccoon named Chiktika Fast Paws, who's highly intelligent but prone to act before he thinks. So high intelligence, lower wisdom. Um, he will tend to borrow things and... Uh, that gets Bervin, his friend, into trouble. Interestingly, their partnership is a partnership. It is not uh, master and pet. Um, this companion is truly a companion to him. Uh, he tends to keep to himself except for having his Chiktika. He is uh, on good terms with all burrowing mammals. And um, it's, it's, it's an interesting guy. So now we go to Sigujan Earthcaller. He's a lesser god. This guy is a, a little bit more up my alley. And this guy calls out, Baron Wild Wanderer calls out the uh, nature aspect of the gnomes. This guy calls out the mining aspect. So Mr. Earthcaller is AC0, 285 hit points, 20% MR. He's neutral good, and he allows all good and neutral alignments, gnomes primarily. He lives in the Twin Paradises. He's a 15th level druid, 16th level magic user, 16th level illusionist. And a fourth level bard. No thief here, which, which is interesting. He is the gnomish deity of earth and nature. Friend of all living animals that move above and below the earth. He's known to his worshippers as the gray-skinned gnome. Who, and he wears armor made of grass and roots. The hex is plus four leather. He can call two to eight earth elementals of 16 hit dice each once a day to help him in combat. His primary control of is of the earth and nature. He's also seen in many ways as the gnomish god of magic. It's because of his 16th level ma magic user and 16th level illusionist. And many of his followers are illusionists. Gnome illusionists are, are pretty renowned. Uh, the most famous one or the most popular one in our campaign was a thief illusionist uh, named Nasty Nick. And old Nasty Nick was around in our campaign for oh, probably 30 years. So now we go to the only evil representative of the uh, Gnome Pantheon, Earldin, the Crawler Below. He's a lesser god also, AC2, 272 hit points, 30% MR. He's chaotic evil. He, his worshippers are all evil alignments of gnomes. He lives in the Abyss. He is an 8th level cleric, 10th level fighter, 13th level illusionist, and 12th level assassin. The illusionist and the assassin combined can be quite powerful. This guy is the epitome of the evil impulse that rules some gnomes, and he's feared by all other gnomes. He appears a huge, dead white, furless mole with claws of steel. He is a neuter, sexless being, lust for precious metals, jewels, and blood of any human, humanoid, or demi human. No one can predict where he will strike next. So, this guy's not a very nice guy. No much assassins and evil thieves and fighters uh, worship this guy. And now we come to the last member of the Gnomish Pantheon brought out in Dragon 61, Flandel Steelskin. This guy is actually just a demigod. He's armor class 2, 230 hit points, 10% uh, MR, which is not much. He's neutral good. He allows his worshippers alignment is all workers of metal on the gnomes. His symbol is the flaming hammer. He lives in the twin paradises. He works 8th level cleric, 8th level druid, 10th level fighter, 15th level magic user. He wears only a leather apron for armor 
and protection from fire, but it's been enchanted to reduce the damage by half of heat and fire. Uh, he's one of the strongest of the, the gnomer, gnomish demigods. Uh, he's found traveling, often found traveling with one or two gnome deities. Uh, he's basically their god of forging. He, uh, it's, it's an interesting uh, guy. I, he's a demigod only, and usually in old D&D &D, that was based on the number of worshippers that a deity had. So presumably this guy has recently become uh, divine and has not established much of a following. Uh, it's kind of interesting. I, I like Flannel Steelskin. He's one of the most interesting elements of this, and he actually is about the only one I would ever think of maybe sticking in as an avatar into one of my games. So there you have it. That's the, the gnomish point of view, the gnomish uh, pantheon. I, I'm trying to really change my thinking on gnomes. I, I like the class. I still can't feel that they duplicate dwarves a lot. Uh, but I'm trying to embrace the nature aspect to them. And I've actually done that with my NPC gnomes in the last couple of years in my campaigns, where I'm having them be more their own identity with the above and below the earth com communities rather than just being dwarves. So gnomes are not dwarves. I know that. I'm just trying to change things up a little bit. That's all I've got to say today for page 121. I hope you enjoyed this little walk down memory lane in Dragon 61 and taking a look at the gnomes and their gods. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Play crit polite criticisms always welcome. And that's it for today on page 121. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.